Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. The Rule of Two is seen as one of the most brilliant and audacious projects carried out by the Sith in galactic history. It's seen mostly in a positive light because results do matter, and it was a pretty successful program. It eventually leads to Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious and the successful execution of the Grand Plan, which was a Sith imperative to sow chaos across the galaxy and take over the Republic federal government from within using the political system instead of some hostile army. But upon closer inspection, the Rule of Two system was heavily flawed and depended on a lot of luck and miracles. The plan was as troubled and imperfect as its creator, Darth Bane. Today we're going to explain how one Sith Lord's own personal life experience created an ideology that would shape the course of history. Darth Bane was born desolate, and he was born with nothing. His mother had died during childbirth, it was kind of his fault, and his father was an angry drunk who worked in a small cartosis mine in the Outer Rim. Dessel's life prospects made Luke Skywalker's own mundane existence on Tatooine seem like a privileged life. At best, Dessel could hope to become a cortosis miner just like his father and hopefully get killed by some kind of cave-in so he doesn't have to live through that very brutal uh, lifestyle. At least Luke had an opportunity to go to the Imperial Academy and see the galaxy. Also, Dessel's dad was a dick, and when he wasn't physically abusing him, he would verbally abuse him. Later on, when Dessel becomes a Sith Lord, he chooses the name Darth Bane because his father used to call him the Bane of his existence. Dessel would spend his formulative years inside of this very broken and loveless home, and he would have a lot of issues developing meaningful relationships with other people in the town, partly because his father would actually go around the town talking crap about him, and all of his father's friends would just make fun of him, making the situation a lot worse. And so Dessel, from a very early age, had to learn how to rely on just himself. Your earliest experiences are what really shape you for the rest of your life. I mean, some people engage in a renaissance during their middle ages that reshape the course of their life, but generally, people find a lane early on and they stick to it. Darth Bane's personality was shaped by his very abusive and lonesome childhood, and so as an adult, he remained a loner who was pretty antisocial and always seen as an outsider. One of Darth Bane's main inspirations for creating the Rule of Two was his reaction to the Brotherhood of Darkness led by Shere Khan. Now, Shere Khan and this Brotherhood were all former Jedi who had basically defected and started their own faction of the Sith. Lord Khan created an environment of cooperation and equality among Sith Lords. This is actually pretty unique at the time because most Sith Lords were just killing each other. Lord Khan had his own philosophy known as Rule by the Strong, which preached that the strong should get stronger and the weak will get weaker. Naturally, Khan included all of his members in the strong category, and although individually none of the Sith, including Lord Khan, was stronger than Darth Bane, their combined power did eclipse his. Darth Bane believed that he was a Sithari. This is basically the Sith's version of the Chosen One. This was supposed to be this extremely powerful Sith Lord who would bring destruction to the Sith and by doing so also make them much stronger. Darth Bane believed that Lord Khan's cooperative methods harbored weakness and allowed it to fester and spread. What the books of Darth Bane's life don't really mention is that this Sith Lord was probably a bit jealous of Lord Khan and the brotherhood he had created. This is a community which feared and rejected Bane. I mean, Bane was a weird dude. He painted his eyes black like a raccoon and he had this big ass bald dome piece and was always super angry and ranting about forgotten ancient prophecies. Darth Bane didn't really understand how to kick back and relax and be one of the guys. And so instead of trying, he just adopted this mentality that he had to surpass everyone else in the order. Lord Khan, on the other hand, was a charismatic individual who had the ability to lead people by being genuinely likable. Khan overcame his individual weakness through collaboration and using his allies and combined resources to achieve goals much larger than Darth Bane was capable of at the time. Now, if you really think about it, the rule of two systems sounds like something that is created by a relatively antisocial person who doesn't like being in group situations. This is where we can see Bane's personal preferences written all over his ideology. The rule of two actually runs counter to logic. You never decrease the size of your organization to two people if you really want it to survive. 
I mean, during the Rule of Two era, you had individuals like Darth Gravid, who suddenly became a light side follower and was very confused about his own personal views on the Force, and he actually started destroying a lot of information about the ancient Sith and their practices. And this was irreversible damage that set the Sith back many generations. While the majority of the Brotherhood were former Jedi who enjoyed all the luxuries of the Jedi Temple, including the training, the food, and the lodgings there, Darth Bane was a completely self-made man. He would accidentally explode his father's heart one night with the Force without realizing it. And then years later, he was forced to escape from his home planet after he got into a scuffle with a Republic soldier and accidentally murdered him. Bane would eventually land a job in the Sith military as a member of the Gloomwalkers, a frontline infantry unit that was very disposable. At the time, Bane still wasn't aware of the fact that he was Force sensitive. He believed that he just had really good natural abilities and good instincts. He would use those instincts time and time again on the battlefield to save his unit and help them complete their missions. At one point, this unit became so successful that he attracted the attention of the Central Sith Command and was taken away from the battlefield and enrolled in the Sith Academy. By the time Bane arrived at the Sith Academy on Korriban, he was already far older than any other students and way behind them in lectures and ability. It was also extremely rare for an infantry grunt like Bane to ascend to the levels of becoming a Sith Lord in training. But through hard work and a good amount of natural ability, Bane started surpassing even the students who had been training since birth. And that's because Bane really appreciated every opportunity he got, he made the most out of it. And even though he never really got along with his fellow students, he would form relationships that were beneficial to him. He also wasn't necessarily against one-on-one -on -one mentorships like what he had with the talented dark Jedi known as Githany. But if he sensed that a teacher or another individual he's learning from is actually inferior to him, he'll stop respecting them and then stop trying to learn from them. This is why after he learned from Githany, he would just kind of discard her like many other people in his life. Bane's rule of two concept heavily surrounded this idea that the relationship between a master and an apprentice is only sustainable when there is knowledge to be gained from that relationship. At a certain point when the apprentice learns everything they can from their master, it's their duty to basically kill their master and then assume that rank themselves. Again, we see Darth Bane's simplified view of the world invade his ideology. Once again, he's unable to get past his own experiences and use his imagination and creativity to improve on his own learning abilities. Just because he learned the best through a one-on-one -on -one mentorship doesn't mean establishing a Sith school is necessarily a bad idea. The reality is when you just have one-on-one -on -one mentorships like the ones in the Rule of Two system, the kind of knowledge being handed down from person to person highly varies on the competency and intentions of the master. Again, we have to point out Darth Gravid, who essentially was teaching light side ideology to his very confused apprentice, who luckily was smart enough to realize that her master had lost his mind and so she would basically strike him down. Also, what if an incompetent individual won by chance against a superior Sith Lord? Also, there's a chance that an incompetent individual like Darth Gravid could choose much weaker apprentices or defeat a much more superior Sith Lord. It's hard to create a system where the objectively smarter and stronger individual always wins because there's a lot of chance involved as well. You could, for instance, have a freak force user like Anakin Skywalker who's incredibly strong and good at dueling, but at the same time doesn't really care about mentoring people. And then with him, the Sith would just end. Darth Bane also had this really incorrect view that there was a finite amount of force energy out there. He believed that the more Sith there was, the more diluted this dark side energy would become for everyone else. Therefore, having only two Sith meant that those two individuals would have maximum access to the dark side. This actually made no sense. There was plenty of force to go around and a powerful force user does not have more force inside of them. They simply have a better connection and control over the force. This nonsensical belief most likely goes back to Darth Bane's own existence. I mean, here's an individual who had to fight for every resource he ever got his hands on. An individual like him has what I call famine culture. It's this ingrained fear that is derived from a childhood of suffering and shortages that has made him a pessimistic adult that believes that everything in the world can run out, including the Force itself. Ultimately, Bane was a survivor and a very competent warrior. He was really good at just defeating obstacles and overcoming them. This is most likely because he made a lot of mistakes throughout his entire life. 
Bain didn't always take the correct paths. As a matter of fact, he oftentimes stumbled into situations that were terrible. But through sheer will and determination, he was always able to turn a negative into something positive. Like those parasitic orbalisks he stumbled upon while looking for Freedon Nad's holocron. These orbalisks would have been a death sentence for a lesser Sith, but Bane ultimately used these parasites to his advantage and created a suit of impenetrable armor on his body with them. The point is, Bane is not a normal person. His way of going about things, his way of living are not usual, and they are not relatable at all. The rule of two system that he creates is solely based on his own life experiences, which again are not relatable. Darth Bane didn't understand interpersonal relationships. He didn't understand what motivated individuals around him. He had very little empathy or care to develop any empathy. This is why the rule of two system was never adhered to seriously by any of the Sith Lords that were in it. Almost every Sith Master in the rule of two system had their main apprentice and also their side apprentice as well. By assuming that everyone around him would be just like him, Darth Bane made some pretty large miscalculations. He even miscalculated his own devotion to finding the strongest Sith. Because when it came time for him to end his own rule and give away to a stronger apprentice, he, like every other Sith Master after him, would cling to life desperately. And so the rule of two was flawed because its maker was flawed. He was disconnected from how most people thought. He didn't really understand power dynamics between uh, individuals and like group dynamics. And that's why the rule of two was kind of a miracle that it survived as long as it did. But if you really look at its adherents, whether it's Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious, Darth Tenebris, none of them really actually followed the rule of two uh, thing like word for word. They all kind of interpreted the system and took the best out of it and made it their own. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my breakdown of the Rule of Two system in Darth Bane. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.